Good afternoon, everyone. 175 mile per hour winds, Squaw Valley. As that massive front came through California West Coast, 100 mile per hour winds in Colorado Springs, Adriatic Sea pushing at 120 miles per hour in their snowstorms, everything above a Category 2 hurricane, barely a peep on the news. Yet Hurricane Sandy made national news across the United States for over a week. Every single news headline. All-time record rains across Alice Springs desert area of Australia and Uluru. More rain set for this next week. And now it's Western Australia, five times more rain. Floods in the dry season in the Congo. Floods across Asia during the dry season right now. Cosmic rays increasing, which are known to form more clouds. And this is another indicator of the grand solar minimum, which the mainstream media will not touch with a 10 foot pole. And while you're watching the video, please remember to hit that subscribe button for ADAPT 2030. Just a few days prior, one of the largest storms in over 20 years came rolling across the western United States, dumping feet of rain and meters and meters of snow in the mountains, so much it was causing avalanches. Flash floods across the rivers and towns and just amazing nature displays in Yosemite National Park. But accompanying this storm were literally Category 5 hurricane winds at 159 miles per hour in the morning. But all we got out of the media was a tweet from the National Weather Service. Later on in the afternoon, that storm intensified and then they got gusts at 173 miles per hour. Wind speeds reaching over 100 miles per hour in Colorado Springs, which again is a Category 2 hurricane. Barely a peep in the mainstream media nationally about it, but Hurricane Sandy, only pushing 90 miles an hour, was on every single news broadcast, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So selective in what they decide to report. And then we jump over to Europe with their sea effects snow and also another Unusual atmospheric event to say the least, pushing at 120 mile per hour winds in a blizzard, dropping record snows across Greece, Italy, and Turkey, termed as the Bura wind. Again, looking right at the very highest edge of the category three hurricane levels, barely a mention on the news. But if this happened during the summer, oh, they would be screaming global warming left, right, and center is the cause of this. Other anomalous events, weather patterns are completely out of sync with the norm. An entire year's worth of rain coming down in Australia in three days. In the desert, right now, more rain on tap for that area. Overall, Australia, five times more rain than all records combined in the last 116 years for the eastern part of the continent. Yet suddenly, with the new tallies out at the end of December, Five times as much rain in Western Australia as well. Congo flash flooding in the dry season. Looking at their meteorological bureau, December, January, February, generally pretty dry in comparison to the monsoon season. You see all these anomalous clouds across Asia as well. This three hour precipitation accumulation, absolutely so rare. I talked to several people in Thailand and Myanmar. Even the grandmothers down there are freaked out about raining and flooding in the dry season. It extends from the Philippines to Myanmar, into India, all the way into Thailand, which has flash flooding across 10 provinces. And you know what the explanation for all of this is? The cosmic ray intensity. As our magnetosphere decreases, the amount of cosmic rays bombarding our Earth's atmosphere also increases with the grand solar minimum causing more cloud cover at the 15 to 18,000 foot range. You can watch the cloud mystery. Spensmark explains this incredible detail so everybody can easily understand it. And a 12.5 increase over a single one year period should be telling you that our magnetosphere and our sun has definitely changed its output. Even at the last regular 11 year lull in the solar cycle, cosmic ray density was above the norm since the 1960s. When we look at the time from solar cycle 19 through solar cycle 24, 
if we overlay these, you can see when we come into a solar minimum on the 11 year cycle, the cosmic rays increase. But that last low in 2010, definitely something significantly more than previous cycles. And when we overlap the latest solar comparison back to solar cycle 21, where we are now is far below. And total cloud water vapor is going to continue to increase globally. There will be more out of season floods. This is what destroyed crops in the 1600s. There will be more freezing events far outside the normal of what you consider fall and spring. More massive hurricane force winds are going to sweep this planet. And the media just does not want to acknowledge this, talk about it, hear about it, debate about it. It is only warming and this needs to stop. And we need to start putting this on the table for debate and discussion because it affects us all. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. With these exceptional changes at our doorstep right now, these crop losses are going to drive our food prices. And you can just see it so clearly like a crystal ball where the food prices are heading. Up, 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 up. Jump over to Trade Genius. Bob's working on forecasting out the grand solar minimum losses continentally and by crop. He'll be happy to discuss their trading strategy with you and which crops they feel are going to fail. And we are all looking at 2019 as the pivot year to roll over when the planet wakes up. And when they do, we are going to enter a new time of existence.